Simon, it was around this time last year when there was a lot of major changes off the field at the football club. A new board was formed, you became chairman of the football club. How do you try and sum up what's happened in, the, in this last year, your first year at the club? Well, it's been uh, a little bit of a crazy year, I have to say. A lot more happened in that year than we probably envisaged when the new board got involved. So probably the best way is to spread it into two areas of on the pitch and off the pitch. I think looking at our performance on the pitch over the last year, you have to put it in a little bit of context in that when we came in last summer, there was a lot of off the field upheaval going on. And then the manager changed a month before the season was due to start. Um, the whole pre-season was done without, without a management team. Um, we had uh, an embargo put on us by the EFL where we couldn't sign the players that we wanted when the new manager was uh, appointed. So that cost us two weeks. By the time we came out of that embargo, the big long list that Robbie had uh, prepared before he started, a lot of those players had disappeared elsewhere. So it's a matter of just getting the bodies in and, um, and getting a team together. So I look back at that time and I was really worried about surviving actually in the EFL at that point. So. In that context, I think it was a very good season for us. However, when I look at the players that we did get in and, and how we performed for the first half of the year and the quality of the squad we had, there's a feeling of disappointment over the year and a whole in the feeling that we could have done perhaps a little bit better than we did on the pitch. So um, there is a lot of mitigating circumstances why we didn't do a lot better. And I think a lot of the factors when you look back over the season um, that help improve is, is getting a proper pre-season planned, is having a proper plan in place, having some um, stability off the pitch so everyone's quite comfortable in their jobs and what they're doing, picking your targets that you want to try and get in over this summer and over the last transfer window in advance so it's all done in much more of an organised and, and less panic-stricken um, way if you like than we did it last year. And I think all these signs are really good for a positive season for us. Along with that, we've managed to improve things off the pitch a little bit. So um, the budget is uh, increased this year. So again, we've become more and more competitive within our league, though with some of the clubs that uh, have come up from the National League and the spending going on around it, it's hard work for us to keep up with those people. But we feel, feel we can be very competitive next year. In terms of that, that on the pitch, you mentioned that stability. How important is that for everyone, from Robbie to, to his staff to the players going forward now into pre-season and oh, into the season I, itself? I think it's the most important thing because you put plans in place and if you don't have that stability, those, those plans change all the time, a certain style of working, who does what. You need those plans to be able to keep those plans. Now, if you're changing every few months whether it be managers or players or, or whatever it's very difficult to get stability and get a good run of of, of form together and I think pre-season is really important as well we've we've got a proper pre-season plan this year so we're ready to hit, hit the league running this year as well. Just looking at sort of off the pitch matters what's sort of been the, the biggest challenges for you and the board this season and, and how do you feel we've progressed from when you first came into sort of where we are now? Well, I guess when you're looking off the field, there's, there's, there's two parts to it, aren't there? There's the whole hostile takeover uh, attempt at the club that's, that's been fought off. So um, although there's still things rumbling on legally in the background, we had the share issue. We're now a fan-owned club. The board are just custodians of that club. It, it belongs to the fans and it's up to everybody around this club to, to make it work. And it's been a real source of inspiration over the last year how everyone has pulled together for a common cause and it's really important that we keep on working in that way in the future and it's the board's job to to keep everybody pulling in the same direction and really I view that as our job off off the pitch um, so we put a whole the takeover and all the legal stuff aside um, I think most of the board when we joined were quite shocked at the state of the club and 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 how it was run and the lack of transparency on things about th throughout the club really of 
So the first thing that we've done is got the whole accounting side of the club now sorted out. So for the first time on a monthly basis now we can see monthly management accounts, which you'll think of fairly basic thing thing for a business, but it's never been done in the past. We can see what areas of the business are making money, we can see what areas of the business are costing us money. So we've worked hard throughout this last year addressing all the areas in the business that are costing us stuff and there's no end of easy savings to be made. I've had to fall out of one or two people to make the savings but that's what you have to do in business and now over the next year it's all about looking at ways, we've, now we've got the cost under control of increasing the revenue that we bring into the club and by doing that we can uh, start making more money and because of the type of club we are, all that money that we make goes into the playing squad and therefore we can improve the, the product on this, the pitch. So that's very much our strategy going forward. And we expect from the big loss that everyone saw in the accounts last year to be more or less break even this year and would hope to keep that going, breaking even year on year now, but putting more and more money each year into the playing squad. And just while we're on those sort of off the pitch matters, yesterday the club released a statement that we've paid the mortgage off, off on the stadium um, that, that we took out in 2016. Can you just explain a bit more about that uh, and what that means for us? So what we want to do is, in simplifying the business and, and making it very easy for run and, and saving on costs in the business, part of that was to move everything, all the assets of the club, into Rochdale Football Club, um, which, it, which we've now done. And under the Rochdale Football Club, um, our club president Graham Morris and um, David Kilpatrick, who were on the board at that time, put a resolution through in 1987 that means that, uh, that you can't mortgage the ground, you can't borrow money on the ground, you can't sell the ground without getting um, a special resolution through it, an EGM. So we feel as a fan-owned club and having read the fan-led review about protecting the community assets that. Um, that's what we're doing now to protect the football club for the future. So if this board wants to go and borrow money against the club, then it's perfectly right that we go to our shareholders, explain why we want to do it and obtain the 75% approval to do that. And uh, it's a big moment for our club, I think, um, moving forward. What do you sort of see happening in this next year in terms of in terms of off the field? What are the plans of the board? and? and each, de each department in, within the club to sort of, sort of going forward this next year? Well, we've made big progress um, over the last year off the pitch. As I say, we've got the costs, a lot of the costs in, in the club under control. There's lots of projects that we want to do to uh, continue to save us costs, but also to become more environmentally friendly. Um, I think a big focus on our, on our club is the community aspect of it. So there's a lot more work to engage different areas of, of the community and we do that with our charity arm, the Football in the Community Trust. So there's a lot of work to be done there. Um, Football-wise, training grounds, forever looking for a training ground. There's one or two um, irons in the fire there that we're working on to see if we can progress because that would be a massive um, fillet for the club if we could find our own dedicated training ground or, or a training area that suits all our needs. So we can have our academy and first team training together. We see that as a, a big plus. And as I mentioned before, a lot of our focus is on increasing the commercial revenues of the club. We've got some fantastic rooms here, perfect for birthdays, christenings, weddings, funerals, race nights like the Supporters Trust had the other night. Um, We've got all the boxes here that we can hire out for business rooms. We've, we've never done it in the past, so it's very much now a focus on commercially becoming a lot more astute and, and trying to get more money into the club. So uh, that's our challenges for the next year. The Board of Directors obviously announced that the, the season cards prices were frozen again this year. I think we're over 1,200 sold now. Um, so what, what would be your message to those supporters who haven't yet purchased? Uh, would you Everyone's trying to try and back the club this season. Well, it's a big part of our identity um, and it, it's right for us to have the most competitive um, season ticket prices in the league and, and that's always going to be one of our targets to have. Whether we'll be able to keep them frozen um, forever, probably not, but it's certainly our target to be 
and wants the most competitive price in the, in the league. So um, we do that because we want to try and encourage more supporters in and grow our fan base. And again, I'll go back, this is where we're all in it together because the more people we get into the ground, the more money we can put into the football team and the better product we can put put onto the pitch for everyone to watch week in, week out. So um, that's where everyone's got their part to play. We've tried as a board to do our part and freeze the season ticket prices despite inflation going up, costs of everything around the club going up. But it's one area that we're really passionate about, being as competitive as we can on the, on the ticket pricing to try and get as many people in the area in to, to watch our games and uh, enjoy watching the only EFL club in North Manchester. <laughs> Just on the, um, the sort of the match day ticket prices as well, the, the board taken sort of decisions to to freeze a lot of those prices as well, but also just change a couple as well. Yes, yeah, so we've looked carefully at um, match day prices and we don't want to put juniors off, so we've, we've frozen all junior ticket prices. But unfortunately, there is going to have to be a small increase of £2 um, a ticket for uh, adults um, to come and watch the matches. So um, that will go on to match day prices, but I stress again, it makes the season ticket even more better value. So it's really important if people, if they can, can get out and um, get their season tickets with us. And there's, there's finance options available as well if you want to pay over several months. So it's the most cost efficient way of buying your tickets to get a season ticket. So although there's a small increase in match day prices, season tickets prices are frozen. I think that represents great value. Still sort of two or three weeks away from the start of pre-season, but how excited are you for football to return? Well, it seems like we've not been playing forever now already, so um, although it is starting very early this year, um, the last weekend in July, so, um, but on the plus side, there's less Tuesday night fixtures this year and a lot more Saturday fixtures, so we're not quite as crammed in, especially with COVID last year. I don't think it helped us at all playing Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday so much, but... Uh, it means Saturday games this year become a real event and there'll be a lot more Saturday games as well, which we know from our attendances and means more children can come and younger children can come. So we're very excited about that. And uh, everyone behind the scenes is busy trying to uh, shape our squad for next year and um, over the next couple of weeks when the transfer window opens and players' contracts start to expire, we hope to have some uh, exciting moves in the transfer market as well.